Hello, everyone. My name is Jordan Farmer. This is the Uncommon Conversations podcast, part two of episode 19. I know I'm kind of all over the place. Okay, we're back. Cool. So, um, <clears throat> Mike will be back on shortly. <clears throat> there he is. All right, cool. Right. All right. Cool. We're back. All so, right. um, so you were just talking about how you know you, as well as lots of other people you've seen, you know, have struggled during this pandemic. Um, there's a whole philosophy, and uh, another time I'll I'll get deep into the story about how I discovered this. But there's a philosophy called anarcho syndicalism, which is a fancy way of saying the world operates based off of money, and I think. Uh, People do things for many different reasons, not just money. So to say the entire world just operates for money is, mm -hmm. is missing the point. Parts of the world just operate for money. And I think most of sort of why this whole pandemic has happened, why China is sort of being propped up by international business people, and why uh, many international business people want the United States to sort of be on the downfall is because they can make more money doing it. So in Absolutely. some sense, money is just figuring out how much labor is worth, really. It's not so much figuring out how much stuff yes. is worth, because dirt and all that kind of stuff, it doesn't mean anything. Um, but That's if wages thing. are really low and a bunch of, bunch of people will work for a rich person for less money compared to what they have, that rich person has leverage over other human beings and has cheaper you know, human life is cheaper pretty much. So um, I'm sort of, there's sort of two parts of this one, an example of why they're just making money with this. Uh, if they cared about vaccinating people and the immunity anywhere in the world, they would test people for whether or not they've already had the disease, right? If you already yes. have immunity, yes. Why would we give you a vaccine? It's a waste of a vaccine unless it's about customers and it's about money. They didn't test anyone to see if you already had COVID. They just want you to get it anyways because it means more money for the businesses playing this whole game in the background. Um, Why is it, well, I'm sorry that I'm going to pause you for just one second, Jordan, but you're really on point here with one thing that I wanted to talk about. Um, but just for a second. What what is it with the uh, booster shots every three or four months now? Like I don't know if you heard about it, but Fauci, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the doctor, he now wants people to get vaccinated every what every three, four, five months, just just continuous boosters to you know uh, for the rest of eternity, or whatever. Right? Yeah. I, so I there's know. there's I think there's three explanations, and one of them is true, or maybe mo multiple of them are true. Uh, but, but, one but, but one see, is the money thing, yeah. obviously. One is exactly. the money thing. They just want to keep selling you and keep going. That right. That's an obvious one. If the shots are just the shots, if they're really just vaccines, then they're not anything else that they're trying to put into people's bodies. Then um, their theory is that it wears off over time. If it is something other than the vaccines that they're putting into people, my theory is it wears off after time whatever it is that it's doing or whatever it is that it's putting into people's bodies after three, four, five months, we expel it or it, or it, if it's a, a nanobot in nature, then it's, you know, going to die off and lose signal or whatever it may be. Um, and so they need to have those follow-ups. They also have two, it's now daily pills, two pills a day you take to try to prevent COVID beforehand. That's, that's what well, they're, uh, like, um, I, I, I know that Pfizer. Pfizer. Pfizer just yeah. came out with that recently. Started talking about how they're working on a two pill a day solution. So it's a, so this it's all hilarious. about feeding this you more and more. And also, also, um, <laughs> there is an idea or a philosophy or sort of a school of evil people that believe that uh, unproductive, meaning poor people, are worthless by definition. This is sort of in t in tune with that anarcho syndicalism where the, the only yeah. real value is money and the way the world works is money. If you're not generating revenue, you're a useless human being in some people's worldview. And uh, on top of that, we have false narratives about overpopulation. We don't have too many people. We just 
course we just not. don't have people doing the right things to take care of themselves that's the, see this is the big thing you know, humans you know can take care of many? ourselves you know so we have, the only... many of? we have too many of procrastinating people we have too many people yeah. who who don't do anything okay and I'm, I'm not talking look i'm not talking about like whether someone's a hillbilly or whether someone's upset i, I don't give a shit like you know really like uh, uh, I'm a total meathead, so you know I I am I, I don't come from. A, you're not. You're not. It's not a class thing you're talking about. It's absolutely not. Thing. It's about just doing something. Just do something. Do whatever. Do something. And I think this, um, this is the problem. There's too many people who don't do anything because procrastination is these days a thing. Like you know, you are being incentivized um, to eat shit like to eat absolute garbage um in terms of you know like, like we'll get there later yeah uh, but, um, but that, that that's one thing but another thing is you know like people people aren't really incentivized to be active and i'm not saying just i'm not, I'm not saying go out there and be a bodybuilder uh i'm i'm nothing of the sort okay I'm, I'm i'm just saying you know do something like go go and go and take a walk whatever just do something physical move be and active, try and stay alive Absolutely, and try and do something meaningful. Like try and do whatever whatever makes you feel good. Okay, if you, if you feel like drawing, start drawing. If you feel like writing, just try and write something. I'm not saying write a fucking book because that's a hard thing. I've been trying for for quite a few years now, and and uh, <laughs> I don't think it's going as well as I wish it, it did. But you know. It's just procrastination. There's absolutely not too many people in, out in the world. We, you know, we are, I believe, a some kind of a parasite of this world. When you think of all the animals, we are definitely the worst kind of an animal there is. Uh, when it comes to, you know, all other animals, you know, uh, we're, we're the only ones who couldn't adapt to nature. We have to, you know, we have to adjust everything around us okay that's that's how we you know I, I, I sort of understand where you're coming from but i do oh, think that's a, a dangerous mentality overall but i'll, I'll let you uh sure but, but this is why this is why i'm trying you I'm, I'm i'm trying to be careful with what i'm saying here but what i'm what i'm saying is there's absolutely no argument to support the claim that there's too many people out in the world maybe there are places in the world that are too densely populated that's for sure there are definitely places in the world where people are just living in a beehive okay they're they're just you know way too overcrowded and to me that's that's a little wild too i live in a city right especially because we uh, can build up like we can build vertically so we should never run out of land it shouldn't be sure. that issue shouldn't be a thing we could just keep going up you know absolutely shouldn't be a thing and, and it's not a thing and it's the whole narrative is just to me okay I, again this is just a, excuse me this is just a personal point of view of a you know of someone who doesn't know much about anything i'm just you know i, I just have my um uh, you're just the opinions and all that so so you know so i'm just gonna I, I, i'll just tell you what i know but what i know is that the narrative of overpopulation and the narrative of global warming narrative of climate change all of those things are motivated by one thing it all comes down to money if you don't know what things all about then follow the money and you will always find it there it's like that you know that's 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 the issue that i'm having with this that yeah. there is no overpopulation it's all about the money I feel like people pretty much either are operating for good or for money or they're sick and they're evil and or so for they're power, or for they're evil all, yeah for bad and for power out there. yeah sure but yeah but sorry I paused you you were you were talking about that I, I don't know if you remember you were um what you were saying um but yeah go ahead I was I was no, just no, good. I was just good. I, yeah, I was, I was just just... go on go ahead <laughs> okay so look I this is my um, problem here that I was talking at the very beginning about uh, about misinterpreting what you what you hear, okay, whatever, like misinterpreting the information. Um, so it blows my mind that people, some people, look at whatever's going on right now. Okay, they they watch the news, whatever. It it also comes down to which channel you're watching. I, I I have noticed that that there's definitely a big impact of that. If you know, if you don't 
put too much thought into what you're watching, then then you can be easily influenced by either Rachel Maddow or uh, I mean nobody listens to John Hannity, you know. whoever. Yeah, like, yeah this, this is the thing. So so you know, I I, I actually. My favorite is definitely Fox News, um, but you also have to take everything with a grain of salt, and you also have to take. I like Fox Business the most. They're like the most balanced to me because they're yes. they're business people. They're not they're not concerned with like like they know what yeah, they know. So well, the business stuff they yeah. talk about like business, and yeah. then the stuff that isn't business, they're like, "What is going on here?" Like that. <laughs> that's pretty much it. <laughs> yeah. So I like. So. It. So, so that's that's you know, so that's that's how I feel. Um, all of that, all of those things are propaganda tools uh, for certain establishments, whatever, for certain you know big businesses and all that. Uh, some yeah. someone is always invested in that. You know, we, you can always yeah. try and um, well, it's often in some cases the same people own all of them. Very much so. Yes, so, um, I do yeah. know that. Um, I do know that that there are quite a few. For example, left-wing outlets there that are owned by one person, and that one person is heavily invested with other people who have all of those so-called woke or leftist well, agendas. Like, like Jeff Bezos owns, um, yes. owns the Washington Post, and he's he has his own. So it's interesting. So that I don't, I don't believe. So so I believe that the media establishment works not. It's not left versus right. It's the establishment Absolutely. versus those who are challenging the establishment. And so left-wingers right now across Europe and across the United States are kind of the, the useful idiots for the establishment because the, the Biden just dangerous. has to say, well, yeah, but well, here's what I mean. Like Biden just has to say, we need to have fair and equitable, inclusive uh, programs that don't marginalize anyone and you know he just has to say all that stuff and then do whatever he wants it's and madness. a bunch of people are like yes I understand um, whereas whereas the right wingers are challenging that are challenging what's happening they're they're like no the government's messing up what's going on so I think because the left wing doesn't challenge the establishment as much as the right wing does right now, right at this moment because it changes um, the the powers that be are anti right, but only for that reason. It's not that they're actually left, because what we're seeing now, once Trump was out, mm -hmm. now they're starting to hold Biden accountable. Talk about the lab leak theory, like they're letting yeah. the left wing think about stuff now, because they got their guy out and they got or they got the other guy out, they got their guy in, so now they can kind of get it back to seeming normal. Whereas mm -hmm. before it was all propaganda, nonstop, nonstop, because the establishment was being challenged like more than it ever has been uh, before. Hopefully not more than it will be, but definitely more than it ever was. Like no one has done what Donald Trump did. And like that should show you, that should show me, that should show everyone what the power of one person is, like what one person can do. Look, to me, honestly, I did say it before on my podcast and, and, and um, I will say it as many times as I have to, to, um, to, to someone finally agrees with me because so far not many people have. But I honestly think that, and uh, let's, let's not go too deep uh, down the topic of presidents today, uh, tonight, but I honestly think that Donald Trump has been the best president since Abraham Lincoln. Honestly, you know, like, like he has done, if not as much, if not more, at least as much for the United States and for uh, the countries that, you know, are allies of the United States. Not a big fan of the word ally these days because it's being abused by the BLM, you know, and, and Antifa and all those lunatics. But, um, but, but, but no, that's, that's the truth, really. Um, Donald Trump has done a lot for the people. Donald Trump yeah. actually is calling the woke out uh, on their bullshit. You know, yeah. he's, he, 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 of all the people, you can count on him that he's definitely going to say what he, what's on his mind. You know, he, he yeah. will always tell you what's on his mind and he's going to say it to the whole fucking world. Even if he's wrong. Tweet it, okay. <laughs> <laughs> They're not going to be there. going to be like, yo, Mr. President, hold on a second here. And you're like, you were saying what? And it's, you know, and the tweet's gone. And, uh, yeah. and then the CNN has got something to talk about and MSNBC has got something to talk about, you know, and the Fox News um, have a 
topic to discuss with the president once uh, once once they get him on. And uh, and and you know, and, and it was straightforward. It was like people had a problem with that because it was like he was it wasn't presidential. But what the fuck's going on right now? Yep. So here's here's saying saying presidential is like this saying is professional like, or it's like saying an anchor person like. That is like, fake. Like, no, it wasn't PC. Like people need it to was, understand it, that's fake. <laughs> it wasn't fake, exactly. This is this is the how to, this is the, the sort of problem. Look, I've worked for some big corporations in my back in my day. Um, not for a long time because I could never put up with that shit too much. Um, but I had but I had a few experiences at a few big places where there's this corporate culture. Okay, where you have to you know behave a certain way I, I worked at a place where you had to wear a tie like you, you didn't it, it, there was the dress code you you couldn't just wear a fucking shirt okay in a suit no you had to wear a tie okay so so i was like okay this is a little fucking crazy because i was just a, you know I was just, <laughs> in accounts payable paying invoices i was like okay but whatever the, if that was the thing maybe they had their you know reasons for for that kind of culture it just turned out that it was quite old school you know the whole management and all and they were like they they all worked there for thirty years or so, and and it was just just an old school kind of. I got I gotta be honest. Part of me part of me respects and understands. Look, I like, love the uh, uniform. Like I the high the, expectations. The, like you look sure. your best. You you kick ass. You look like a million bucks every day. Like I, I can get that. I like like I don't like it. I don't do it. Look at me. I'm t-shirt you know this is how i do it so. I'm, I'm really not you know I'm, I'm really not not i'm really not about appearance here you know because I, I i i don't give a fuck okay um and i didn't give a fuck back then i was like okay if you want me to wear a suit fine i'll wear a suit i'll get the best i can and i'll i'll, I'll try and look as fuckable as i can you know <laughs> just just you know, try, try and try and do my best that's fine um, that's, that's what Bill Burr said. So I stole that from him. I stole it from Bill Burr, people, um, my favorite comedian. Um, but but yeah. Um, anyway, um, look, I respect the culture, but on the other hand, dress code is one thing. Uh, and if we have a dress code, then what I don't like is a fucking dress down Fridays. Listen, either we we wear a fucking suit or we don't. Like, don't don't tell me that I can wear jeans on a Friday because what the fuck? Like, it's just ridiculous. Okay, <laughs> so we have a dress code or we don't. That's my personal opinion. I personally say, try and look your best because you're at work. But if you feel the most comfortable in a fucking t-shirt with Metallica logo on. Wear that, dude, because I really want you to feel as comfortable at work as you possibly can, as possibly as I can accommodate you, as you know, as comfortably as I can do that. I'm gonna do that so that you can focus on getting the job done rather than fucking trying to tie your tie up. Like, give me a break, literally. I don't give a shit about your appearance. I don't give a shit I'm about a, your I'm a, big, I'm a big believer in um, performance being the only metric that matters. That's, all I, that's about, all, that matters. all I care about is results. Look, I don't, I don't even have to like you, okay? We have to... <laughs> we can be entirely different in terms of character, okay? We can stand for entirely different things. If you can deliver on the job, if I can see the results, if I can see that we can work together, if I can see that we can have a, you know, a civilized conversation without getting in each other's way, like, okay, I wouldn't probably hang out with you, uh, whatever your name is, you know, if, if, if we were after work, you know, um, whatever, if, if I met you at the club, it would just be probably, hey, how are you doing? And I would probably go my own way. But that doesn't change the fact that I can see that you can get the job done. So how about you just get the job done? I pay you and everybody's happy or the other way around, right? Like I do the job for you, you pay me, whatever. I think there is always a way to work things out. Be, you know, before you start getting emotional about something, before you start getting personal about something, like a relationship with someone at work, before you do that, take a breath and just take a moment, take a step back rather than do that rather than get into the emotional mode rather than get into the personal mode just focus on get the fucking job done you're here to get the job done don't waste your time on getting emotional and all that because that will get you in the mode where you will probably not end up making the best decisions you'll probably end up making the kind of decisions that you will then have to work on fixing and all that uh the the, the consequences of and all that so so the way I see it is, if you're there to get the job done and and 
and that's all it really is, then just do that. You know, suck it mm. up and do it. Just do it, and don't, don't, you know, don't, don't try and get personal about something because you will have disagreements with people. People are fucking different. Everybody's different, right? Um, but you know, either you're there, you know, with all your transparency, and you say to people, "Hey, listen, this is how I feel. You know, this is, you know, like this hurts my feelings. This triggered me, and this and all that," or you just get the job done. You know, and then you go home, and then then at home you can you can you can talk to your cat, do whatever you gotta do. You know, mm -hmm. that's it. Yeah. Just efficiency, efficiency. You know. Um, yeah. So we we wanted to get into, or uh, I wanted to get into for sure. Once you mentioned it, the fake meat, impossible meat versus real oh, food issues. Yeah. Sure. Um, so so what is first off? What is your you know your quick take? Break it down for us. Very quick take on that. Uh, fuck Bill Gates and his impossible fucking burger and uh, Beyond Meat and all that. Um, because Bill Gates is behind all that shit. I don't know if you know that, but he is extremely <laughs> heavily invested in that. So Bill Gates does own the uh, Beyond Meat impossible burger. Bill Gates also owns the most farmland in the whole of the US. Uh, when we're talking about industrial farmland, I don't know if you know that. Um, but yeah, Bill Gates is officially the owner of the most farmland in the United States of all people. So that should, you know, at least, at least make you think for a moment uh -oh. about, you know, the, the whole thing. Yeah. So, so my take on that, it is not proven to be healthy. It is proven to be quite the opposite so far, at least. Um, I hope he gets it right because it is rather unlikely that all of a sudden Bill Gates and people like him will disappear off the surface of the planet, right? So yeah. rather than that, rather than trying to, you know, to, to, to um, fight with the guy, try and figure out a way how to work around it, you know, let him do his fucking thing, let him poison as many people as he wishes with his impossible burger. Uh, you try and convince as many people as you possibly can to go and eat animal based diet. This is my take on that. Like I, I personally try and have been trying to do the carnivore diet for the past year and a half, especially since the pandemic um, started, you know, since I um, I'm pretty much working from home and um, 100% of my work is now being done from home where back uh, before the pandemic it was about 20-30%. So now, you know, I, I, I work exclusively from here. Um, so I had more time to, to actually start cooking and start eating right rather than, you know, going for, for the usual what I used to feed myself uh, on. What I used to feed myself. What I used to. What I used to eat. <laughs> Sorry. What I used to eat back in the day. Burgers, Domino's, um, fast food. You know, whatever. Five Guys, hot dogs, whatever you name it. You know, kebab. Um, just fast food every single day. Mm -hmm. um, and I always felt fatigued uh, halfway throughout the day. Uh, literally, I would get up at six a.m., seven a.m., go to work by nine, ten a.m. You know. Um, I'd have my usual pastries, whatever, some, you know, some, some Danish, whatever, uh, with my tea or, 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 you know, or coffee back in the day. Um, and, you know, it, it, I always, about two or three hours later, I would, I would get this, like, like, I would get really tired. I would get really tired for about two or three hours and I could never figure out what is going on. And what was really going on is I had sugar crash. Every single day I had a sugar crash for years, you know, and I, and I didn't even know that there was such a thing. And then I would go home. Um, I, I would, at work, I would be up at about probably 70% of what I could do, like 70% of my performance, you know. Um, so, you know, so then, uh, and I never thought about it either. I was like, oh, I could probably be doing better, but I don't know what's going on. Um, then I would go home and I would eat a pizza for dinner or, you know, the best case scenario, sushi or something like that. That, that actually is pretty good for you. But, um, yeah. but you know, but, but, but very rarely I would eat steak or anything like that. Um, or, you know, my usual would be pizza or, 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 or a burger. Um, and... And I never thought about it. But when I started listening to um, Paul Saladino, 
uh, Dr. Paul Saladino. He's uh, uh, a guy who was on Joe Rogan's podcast once. And I recommend that podcast to everyone, literally. Uh, give me just one second. I recommend that podcast to everyone uh, who wants to learn about uh, the carnivore diet. Because I am definitely, like, like you can already tell by now, definitely not a scientist. Um, <laughs> from my own experience, I can tell you one thing. Carnivore diet has done wonders for me, okay? I had always, like I said, I had always been tired halfway throughout the day, okay? There was not a day, unless I haven't eaten anything in the morning, like I haven't eaten any of those fucking poisonous pastries or anything like that, or a donut. You know, Krispy Kreme was literally two minutes away from my office. So the two or three times a week I would go and I would get like two or three uh, peanut butter Krispy Kremes uh, like with the Reese's peanut butter. And, um, and I, I like the most amazing thing in, on the planet, you know, and always makes you feel like shit later. <laughs> uh, so, so, you know, so, so I stopped all of that nonsense. Okay. I was like the Paul Saladino said that on Joe Rogan's podcast. He said, cut off all that bullshit, cut off all the refined sugar, all the sugar, all of the carbs. So all the pasta, all of the white bread, uh, even the whole grain bread, whatever, all of that, all of the grains, cut all that shit out. What to eat? Like, Okay, there are, there are some hardcore carnivore uh, people who only eat red meat, you know, and, and that's it. Red meat uh, and red meat and red meat and that's it. Okay, I say you don't have to go that extreme, but I would say eat as much meat as possible. You can eat different animals. You don't have to eat just beef, you know, or, or lamb, whatever. You can eat uh, poultry. You can eat pork, whatever. But but my preference, like my my favorite thing, is red meat. So that's what I've been eating for the past year and a half. And I don't have to eat as much. I eat about half, maybe two thirds of what I used to eat. Um, in terms of calories, I rarely go over two thousand a day. And I definitely have been feeling much much better in terms of like energy you know i i, I can eat one meal i i do intermittent fasting as much as i possibly can not too much but um but i do usually anywhere between 5 a.m when i wake up or 6 a.m when i wake up till about 3 4 p.m let's say around 4 p.m i will eat my first um my first uh meal um and I would just eat red meat. For example, I would eat a steak, like like a big steak, you know, so that I can make up for all these hours that I've been torturing myself not eating. Um, then all of a sudden, the intermittent fasting few months in is literally no struggle. I, I, I don't get the cravings in the morning to eat anything, you know. And if I do get the cravings, then I'm going to eat meat. And... Mm -hmm. And and that's really that's 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 what I have to say about the impossible burger. No impossible burger, no vegan diet, no tofu, no nothing like that will ever make you feel as good as a ribeye, okay? Or or I don't know, like short ribs or like like you, you don't have to spend a fortune. This is another thing that people think like, oh, you know, eating a steak every day, you must be so fucking like you, you, you like no, you don't have to spend a lot of money to eat really healthy and it doesn't have yeah. to be a chore that you have to be looking forward to some cheat days this is another thing that this guy was just saying on his instagram very recently i think yesterday uh paul saladino um recorded an, a video on instagram where he uh talked about cheat days how how he's not a fan of those and i personally cheat a lot on my diet because every now and then I would still call five guys, you know, or, or, or get something like that because I just love it. Uh, and, and I only weigh 65 kilos. So it's like 143 pounds or whatever. So, so, so yeah. not a lot. So, you know, is that your, work, um, um, so what is your, what has your body weight been throughout your life as an, as an adult? What have you sort of gone up and down through? So the most that's pretty weighed, lean, 143 or, or yeah. What'd you say? Yeah, was it 65 kilos? 65 kilos, yeah. So so let's say, and I'm gonna say it in kilos because I I just don't know in pounds like otherwise. Um, yeah, it's uh, uh, 2.2. One 2 .2. just multiply by 2.2. 2. 
Okay, so I got my, hold on, we got my, let me just put this here for a second. So I'm going to tell you, 2.2. So I used to weigh anywhere between 132 and 150. Okay, 148. So 130 to 148. So, um, so yeah, so, so not a lot, uh, but the so that, case, But still, like, that's like a, well, you got to understand, that's like a 15... That's like a fifteen percent body weight spread. So I, I weigh about two hundred ninety-five pounds right now. So the equivalent for me is about forty-five, fifty pounds. So, so it might okay. not sound a lot, like a lot, you know, in general. But that's just because you're, you know, your lower percentage is lower weight. But for me, that would be you know forty pounds, forty-five pounds. So that's a big, a big spread, you know. Quite, yeah. And, um, and, 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 you know, and the thing is, in, in my case, um, I, I just wasn't taking care of myself. So I started working out about, like, I, I was working out when I was about 16, because uh, I lived in Tenerife and, and, you know, there were girls on the beach and all that. So I was like, right, I am definitely working out. You're going to get um, your muscles in. <laughs> that's it. Um, but, but, you know, I literally, I looked better when I was 17 than I looked throughout my 20s up until about, 28 years old when I started working out about two years ago. So about two years ago, I started working out. Same I, with I, me. So, so 16, I, I 17 looked, was my peak. <laughs> but you see, I always looked, I always looked absolutely laughable uh, throughout my 20s uh, because I literally looked like a, like a teenager. Okay, like I had not too much of a muscle, like very little muscle actually, and I had just a tiny little belly always. Um, so, so, so that was always quite like, like embarrassing to me. Um, but I never really, I, I never really did anything about it. You know, I had, I had no chest, whatever, whatsoever. I, you know, I, I just looked funny. Um, about two years ago, uh, <laughs> about two years ago, I started working out and I started eating healthier. And about a year and a half ago, I started eating mostly meat. And now I have about I don't know, nine, ten percent body fat. Uh, the last time I checked, I had like nine percent um, uh, on on one of those machines. I don't know how accurate that is, but you know, but it just tells me that I'm, uh, you know, that that, that it's not. Is, that it, bad. is it one of those things where you like do the pinching? Uh, no, things? it's just one or was it where you go into it? It's one of those things that you just stand on it, and it's supposed to do some scanning or whatever. It's supposed to tell you. Oh, okay, so that's those, those like are I'm pretty really accurate. The science on that. Those are pretty. They used to do. They used to do it where they grab you and they like pinch, and okay. then depending on how much was there, that would kind of how that, that. And those that's, that's so inaccurate. Told, yeah. It's crazy. So yeah, the, so, yours yeah, is pretty no, accurate. Yeah. Look. Um, I feel much better, okay? I feel much better. I look much better because I look actually, I, I now look, um, I think, more like a man than, 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 than like a teenager. So, so that, you know, that, that is definitely um, uh, a lot better for my self-esteem. Um, uh, I've always been lacking that quite a lot when, when I was younger, you know. I, I, I never really uh, had confidence or anything like that. Um, those you know those really key things that, that you need in order to socialize with people properly you know to interact with people um and uh having always having always wanted to um do something in entertainment such as podcast or something like that i knew that i had to do something about it so how do you build your confidence first things first i think you need to obviously face your demons whatever is you know whatever whatever you're struggling with i had some struggles myself um so work on that and second of all uh try and try and do something about those things that you know that you have a problem with so not necessarily i'm I, i'm talking like demons i'm talking about addictions for example you know i i i had like I was always quite prone to um, all sorts of substances when it comes to partying, you know. Um, and uh, and right now, um, I am staying as far from it as I possibly can uh, because I knew that that was literally one of those things that I had to give up uh, on. And uh, and I knew that it wasn't doing me any good. And it was just like one of those things like, listen, this isn't doing me any good. I'm fucking quitting it right now. And I'm not going back to it. That's I'm done, you know. 
and uh so so no regrets there you know and no regrets that i've done it either i i have some you know experiences and um i've learned my lesson that's that's literally all it is there was no point you know uh, uh going through it all the time mm -hmm. <clears throat> you gotta move on but second yep. thing is working on those you know on those personal problems that you know that, that everyone has so in some people's cases uh confidence in some people's cases self-esteem in some people's cases depression or whatever you know like like people are dealing with all sorts of horrible things some people have um, a hard time speaking some people have a hard time showing up some people have a hard time staying organized we all we all have our struggles yeah. for sure so so in my case it was um definitely about how i looked uh when i looked at myself in the mirror i was i was like dude this is not good you know you have to fucking do something <laughs> about it and you have to do something about it real quick i, just, uh, I can just like, imagine you sitting there and just being like this is not good <laughs> no I, I, that's literally what it was you know and, and i and i smoke a lot of weed so so i get like really paranoid at times uh and and that's what that's what happened you know i i, I was like I, i got really freaked out i was like no this is this isn't me this isn't supposed to be me this is me right now but this isn't supposed to be me this is not how i you know i'm imagined myself at this age so i'm making a move i'm i'm, I'm doing something so so i started working out and i started working out just at home you know i got myself a kettlebell and uh i got some supplements like some really good supplements and um and i just started investing time in it you know knowing that i have no excuse to not do that um especially that you know we got a pandemic whatever you know i'm not working i i got all the time in the world to do my thing so i've decided to make working out and you know doing my podcast and writing my thing so that's what i've been doing and this and there's no excuse not to do that you know i i don't have to see the the best results but i have to be doing it consistently and as long as i do it consistently then it's going to work you know and 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 the same goes for diet the same goes for diet you cannot fuck around with that you have to if you decide to do something you have to commit to it and that's you know when you really think about it all of that comes down to discipline and that's one thing that i learned from jacko willing so shout out jacko if you yeah. by any chance ever listen to this um thanks for changing my life dude uh because without discipline you know my life was was an absolute disaster for a very very long time um now you know it's an entirely different thing just because i have discipline and you know and thanks to that i can work on other things um which step by step slowly you know are 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 improving how i overly feel about myself and uh and and you know if you don't have discipline in your life if you, uh, how how are you going to stick to your carnivore diet how are you going to stick to um doing whatever you want to do how are you going to how are you going to stick to exercising or working on your issues you know whatever your issues are there is not a no chance in the world that you are ever going to do that if you have no discipline so really to start doing anything you have to work on that and and how difficult is it it's really not that difficult you know it's really not that difficult to get out of bed in the morning and and just say listen i am i am not sleeping in i'm getting up I'm not, uh, you know I'm getting up right now and I'm going to do it whatever it is I got to do I'm going to do it It's interesting cuz yeah it's um it all of the actual work like uh if you need to better your life and go get a job actually filling out the application actually turning it in and doing all that stuff it's relatively simple stuff but mentally and whatever for whatever reasons people have hang-ups and have things that they that are keeping them from just pulling the trigger and you You have to work on pulling the trigger. And uh I like that you you know you talk so much about the carnivore diet and it, it how important it uh, is and everything. Um, changed my life. It absolutely yeah. changed my life, dude. I I I recommend it to everyone. And look, sorry, one th one thing that I really forgot about. Um prepare for um some movements uh like like some serious movement and you know and whatever your system. Um if you go for the carnivore diet you better work from home that's what i'm saying okay you, or you better for sure your your toilet is going to be your best friend 
Yeah. That's it, and uh, and and it's quite serious. Like I had a, I had a really 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 bad diarrhea for like uh, two weeks before uh, my body actually was like, okay, dude, um, I think we're good now. Like I, I know that this is the way it's gonna go from now. And I'm not saying just. I wonder how much of that is the bad germs and stuff dying off and causing issues definitely as they die that. off. It is definitely that, and it's definitely it's like I, I would say that this is probably a withdrawal from the shit diet you know from from eating carbs eating refined sugar i don't eat any sugar right now uh except for this red bull that i'm drinking see i'm i am a hypocrite uh but um but like i said i do cheat on my diet as you know a, a little bit but but i don't go for any white sugar if you know what i mean like consistent I don't, I don't consistent like I, I like this this is kind of how i say it try to get a b in life 80 percent, you're hitting it that's good enough. That's Don't that's beat it, yourself that's up. It. That's, yeah, it's so, very so different. I got seventy percent because seven yeah. is my favorite number. So seventy. So, yeah. so you know, I but same honey, same idea. I, you know, you can't you can't yeah. say I didn't hit a hundred percent, so I'm worthless. You got to say I got sixty percent. I got fifty. You know, and and that's you want to be and the thing is, you want to you want it's like a stock. It's not about having a great day and you're great and then having a low day and whatever. It's about getting the trend as it's going over time yeah. and, and getting it going the right direction, you know? So, and you know, and, and when it comes to this diet, right. Um, I'm not saying eat only red meat or, or anything like that. Eat, look, eat meat. That's what I'm saying. And eat, try and eat as good quality uh, meat as you possibly can. Um, because there is lots of industrial meat out there that is, you know, just stuffed with hormones and uh, and antibiotics Dude. and all sorts of shit. I got some um, grass-fed milk recently. Um, just, just we we've been on oat milk, oat like from oats, oat milk for a while. That's pretty good too. But um, me and my girl, we got some grass-fed milk, and it's just so much tastier. So, so much it tastes right? so much better, man. It's crazy. So much better, and it's like you look. I I, I got a I got like a thirty six day aged ribeye from Tesco. Okay, that was awful, and I got a twenty one day aged, just a normal basic ribeye from 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 a from another grocery store that actually has really good quality meat, and the steak was outstanding, and it was half the price. Okay, like I said. Uh, I, I am always about quality over quantity. I say um, in, in every single case of every single thing in life, okay? Go for quality. Don't go for quantity. Don't, don't be a greedy bastard. Um, you, can do, you can do better than that. Um, although, uh, you know, again, I'm, I'm a little bit of a hypocrite because I, I, I do that so much. But, but try and do that as much as possible, you know? And, 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 and don't beat yourself up if you don't deliver 100 percent. just try and do your best and then the following day try and do better and that's it um but you know but try and eat as good meat as good you know quality of meat as you possibly can but also eat some mushrooms eat some some greens every now and then okay some broccoli i don't know eat avocados because they're good for your brain very good for your brain and they're you know they're they're actually a fruit um and you know to a contrary to to uh what a lot of people think because uh, i heard from even from my mom that avocado is a vegetable it's not <laughs> i don't think it is that's um, cool though that's cool it, i didn't know i didn't i never really thought about it but that makes sense it'd be more of a fruit than a than a vegetable is, the way it grows and you know it's and, and, the way it grows just like tomatoes <laughs> yeah it's like it's it's quite 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 mind-blowing huh um but um yeah. but yeah they're very good for you uh, so eat avocados and um and bananas and, and 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 meat and eat fish i heard that there's a lot of dodgy stuff about fish these days because of the pollution you know because of how how poisoned the the waters are uh and obviously we're, we're and, not and doing... farming 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 fish is is yeah not, not done well it's not done well at all it could be done well there are ways to to do it but they'd rather they'd rather get a bunch of fat unhealthy fish and dye and color them the right color to make it look like it's the right thing than just give you a healthy fish in the first place so 
that's so wrong. That's just as wrong as the fucking artificial meat. Like that, that, that really, that is, that is. And fat, real quick, protein and fat is so important. Like protein, Very. Uh, overall protein consumption as you're a kid, when you're growing up, that affects your brain development. And literally what our brain yes. is made out yes. of is fat. Are like the actual like uh, yeah. cells yeah. and the way it's all tied together. It's actually fat. It's not amino acids binding together to create proteins. It's not um, glucose and other sugars binding together to become carbohydrates. But it's actually like fatty Most tissue fat, yes. in the brain that's like all. Whoosh. So it's um, so healthy fat. So healthy fat, healthy protein. Like you said, quality over quantity. <laughs> It makes such a big difference. Um, Absolutely. I, I've been in a weird position because I've been overweight most of my life. And somewhere when I was really young, I was healthy and had a great diet and everything, like up until about age eight. And then everything kind of went to shit. But uh, I got introduced to McDonald's and, and uh, ice cream sandwiches and all this kind of stuff. Tell me um, about it. But uh, um, I have sort of I've always had the mentality that like. um. I'm not afraid to say I'm fat because it's just, it is what it is. And I'm choosing, like, I'm honest with myself. That is I'm not so going to put better. in the work. That is so I'm not going to put in the work to change it. So I'm just going to say it is what it is. And I, I'm, ha I'm living, this is how I'm living. This is how I'm choosing to be. And I'm okay with that. So like, like you, you know, I, at first I thought it was a cigarette. I didn't know what it was that you were smoking, but people no, smoke no. cigarettes. People have, you know, all sorts of bad, healthy, you know, choices. Skydiving isn't very great for your health when you think about when it goes wrong, you know? Probably so, not. um, oh, so, and, and I know. Like, so, yeah, so this, this sort of, so it's an important thing for sure, but I, I don't even know what my point was with this necessarily, but I just, uh, you, you were talking about, this thing. you were, you were, you were talking about that, that, you know, that, that you've been overweight most of your life, oh, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I've oh, been, you know, I just wanted to say, like, I'm like now I'm much more focused on it and I kind of want to get things dialed in. But I've understood the truth of all of this for a pretty long time. Uh, Elliot Hulse, I don't know if you know who Elliot Hulse is. He's uh, big on the Internet. He's he's he um, he used to be just be a strength and conditioning coach that was like a philosopher, too. And then it grew into now he's sort of a a leader of a, of a whole network of young men trying to be um, men in the realest sense of the word. So he's, he's spell, somewhat worth checking how out. How do you spell his second name? Do you know how to spell his, uh, his second name? Oh, uh, Hulse, H-U-L-S-E. Okay. Uh, I haven't heard about him, but I will definitely look him up after, after we're done. Um, yeah, so, he, yes, please, so he was... So I studied, started studying him and his worldview and his and sort of learning from him um, 12 years ago or so. And he knew, so not just, so like, here's, here's the thing. Carnivore diet is really good for, for white people and for people that are, whose ancestors are more so closer to the equator. They ate a lot more grains and a lot more of the, the food that grows in that region, a lot more fish, right. less red meat. So there's like, there's certain, and so that the whole school of thought behind that sort of thinking is called metabolic typing. And so if you've noticed, I've noticed most mm -hmm. of the people that are big in the carnivore world are as white as hell. Yes. <laughs> like yes, it's mostly 100%. just a bunch of white people. And so 100%. I think it's, that it's that's an overlap country. between metabolic typing and, and uh, that sort of wave of carnivore dieting. Cause there are lots of people that um, are better off, uh, better off with more of a carb based and fruits and grains based diet. Um, you know, George St. Pierre, the MMA fighter, yes. Yes. his coach for us, the hobby who's the in Canada, he's a big time trainer. He's a, uh, he, he doesn't eat a lot of meat at all. A little bit of fish, a little bit of chicken, but mostly just carbs and fruits and stuff like that. So his, his particular diet is more, and he's Persian, I believe. So it makes it's, it, it fits, you know? Actually, um, interesting that you've mentioned George St. Pierre, because I think it was just him recently that uh, Paul Saladino was um, uh, doing his diet, uh, the carnivore oh. guy, you know, oh, the yeah. carnivore doctor. Um, I think prior to his recent fight or something like that, I think it was George St. Pierre. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but, but, but I think it was. Um, I think you're right. 
and and he and he looked rich. I don't know if I don't know if you I don't know if you saw him, but but it, it, he looked incredible. And he was on that diet for like two or three months. I'm not. It 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 just obviously he always looks good because he's fucking George Saint Pierre. So so he yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. <laughs> but um yeah. but but I'm just saying like he he looked incredible, you know, before that fight. Like um, um he took a picture on an Instagram, or whatever, and um and and that's what that's what it does. Yeah, the fight, I, I, the fight I, I, when I he went up, the fight when mm -hmm. he went up in a weight class against Michael Bisping, you could mm -hmm. tell he was inflated a little bit. He was a little yeah, bit absolutely. unhealthy. And and yeah, it's good to see him lean out and get and like dialed in again. He just pushed himself a little bit too far. If he had kept it maybe six pounds lighter, so he went up to two hundred five. If he had gone mm -hmm. up to one ninety seven, one ninety eight, and then tried to come down to one eighty five, I think that would have been better. He just he's George St Pierre. He just pushed himself too hard. He's gonna he's gonna do but, that. But that's, he's, that's he's the savage, mentality, you know. You, know? you, you yeah. gotta you gotta admire the mentality of all those people, you know. Uh, by that I mean, um, again, Jacko, uh, David Goggins, you know, uh, Tim Kennedy, all those people, they, they really push themselves. I love Tim Kennedy. Really, Tim Kennedy. I fucking love Dude, Tim, Tim Kennedy, Kennedy for president. Tim Thank Kennedy God. for president. Thank God for Tim Kennedy, dude. Seriously, and what he did recently in Afghanistan. Um, but really, there's so many guys out there, you know, there's Mike Sorelli. Um, I don't know if you heard of him. Um, he's a Navy SEAL. Mike Sorelli, shout out, uh, great dude. You know, he was on Jacko's podcast. Um, there was, there's so many people out there, you know, there's Dave Burke, um, uh, JP Donnell. There, there's so many people out there that, that are really that, you know, you listen to it and, and, and my mind is fucking blown. I am, I am telling you, I, again, I'm a meathead, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't know much about uh, stuff. So, so, you know, you might think like, oh, you know, what kind of people is this guy listening to? Like, what kind of a fucking hillbilly is this and all that? Like, I don't care. Yeah. Like, th these people motivate the shit out of me because I, I can see how hard they push themselves to, to strive to be as good as they possibly can. And you have to respect that, whether it's George St. Pierre, whether it's Cameron Haynes. I don't know if you know who Cameron Haynes is, the 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 ball. Yeah, I do. You know what's interesting? You might not know this. He, Cameron Haynes went on to a committee talking about mm -hmm. environmental stuff and all that kind of stuff with the Trump administration. So wow. the Trump administration invited him on to a committee to talk about sustaining wildlife and hunting and all that kind of stuff to help. Now, it's an area that's pretty well regulated to begin with, so he didn't have a lot to add, but he was bringing him in to say, how do we well regulate this area? How do we improve it? And I thought it was really cool that Cameron I Haynes, a guy that you wouldn't think way. would be involved with government, but was mm -hmm. called in to to be a voice, you know? I think I heard him talk about this on, 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 on a podcast. Um, I'm not sure. I think the but, Joe uh, Rogan podcast, yeah. Yeah, but... but really the the dude is such like and 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 this is it this is like why why else like why would they invite him on to 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 advise the president okay people think like that trump was some kind of a fucking uh show or whatever like 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 a tv show no it was the genuine guy doing a legitimate work and yeah. people don't take him fucking seriously because of those communist outlets out there okay let's not call names because we all know what they are okay um it's just it, it just you know it, it just blows my mind that people take him so with a lot like, of people like, think that the, a lot of people think that communism died with uh, the soviet union no but way. the soviet union is just one version of communism and communism there's many versions of it and, and it right is now. a and they're they're better at operating in the shadows. The Nazis were like, "We're coming. We're going to knock your door down. You know, we're killing everyone and blitzkrieging your asses." Whereas the the Soviets are like, you know, they'll figure it out from the background. And and the Chinese government has infiltrated many much of the United States and and the UK's government through money, through the right kind of influencing, and through through you know, uh, blackmail in some cases. But you know. They've gained gained control without military force. They've done it through other means because it's a much more. They're just a more sophisticated more thing. Yeah, much, much more, more efficient, efficient, much more effective. You know, and um, yeah. and you can always do damage. Um, 
you know, it can always do damage and it can always um, go I front. got a great story. I got a great story. So that guy I told you about, Elliot Hulse, his dad is from Belize. And in Belize, he was a dairy farmer and he would kill the cows. And what he would do is he would go and he would pet them and have them and get them all calm. And they'd just be chilling. And then he'd just come up and he'd slowly get a little little insert, just a little prick that would make yeah. them start to bleed out like crazy. And they would just be calm and chilling. And then the cow would slowly fall oh, asleep. Shit. And what, it was totally and non-lethal. Was wow. Communism could potentially be that for us. It's so sneaky that we could be dead before we know it. I think Trump intervened and brought up China and what China's doing to sort of keep that from happening. I'm so grateful for him for doing it. No one was so talking about China, man. No one was talking about China before Trump. So anyone that talks about China now, you have Trump to thank. You know what? I can tell you one thing about China. China is exactly what Trump calls it. Um, and it, worse. <laughs> it, is, it is the virus of the world. Um, and we are all fucked because we are all pretty much dependent on them in terms of industrial, you know, manufacturing and all that. Um, and obviously what is going on right now, you got We're the Klaus Schwab and you got the World Economic Forum and you get all those fucking important people meeting every year plotting on how to, you know, fuck us all over. Um, mm. Sorry, we're going to say something. Oh, I was just going to say, um, we we're in a position now where, well, so here's the thing. If China started to behave, meaning no concentration camps for the Muslims, no silliness on trade, it's not gonna you know, all these it's kinds of things. Well, not, I'm just, China, uh, just, just assuming happen. it just assuming it would happen, just assuming it, it, it happened. And the only way it would happen is if the entire West, all of Europe, all of Africa, all of the United States and, and uh, Latin American countries all got together and say, we're going to start sanctioning China um, if they don't start changing their behavior. Like, that. that's how you could do it. But um, one, like, if China behaves, then they can just be a rich partner of ours and it's fine, Right. Like, like, like China doesn't have to be our enemy. And that, that I definitely see that as still on the table. We could get to that place. And um, China wants to make money. The only way their system stays in place is if they're keeping their people well-fed and taking care of their people. And that's all, the only way they do that is by making money and by generating economic activity. So... If the West said, we're not going to buy your stuff anymore if you don't get your shit together, it's mm -hmm. a real threat. Because the only thing that's holding them up or making China anything but a joke is Western countries buying stuff from them. Because they, they mess I their own currency that. up. They cheat their own system so much that China, if it wasn't for their connect... Like, before 2001, when they entered the World Trade Organization and before they were a part of this whole system... They were dirt poor. Their their GDP was like two trillion. Now it's like twelve or thirteen or fourteen. You know, that's what makes the whole thing so you know so ludicrous that we are all so dependent on them purely because we buy stuff from them. Um, and the funny thing is, you could support your own country. You could support England. You could support Europe. Okay, you don't have to. But you, you you can support I don't know um, uh, you know wherever wherever else in the world they manufacture goods you don't have to buy it from China the thing is China does have access to resources to you know to 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 produce whatever electronics we have right so yeah. whatever computer yeah, whatever the fucking yeah yeah that's it's, all, that's it's all, so they're the know, only place that assembled to... there yeah we have we have places in the United States where we could get that stuff too, but for environmental reasons, we can't go mine it. And Africa has got a whole bunch. Um, Africa's got a whole bunch of, of raw resources. So yeah, so like, it's interesting. When when Trump was doing the, the trade war, it was a tax on stuff being exported from China coming into the United States. He put a tax mm. on that. 
all that that does is it makes it more expensive for that one lane of trade. But from Vietnam, from Japan, from Poland, from for wherever, we can mm -hmm. buy stuff from any other country. So once you tax that, it's more expensive there, but everywhere else it's cheaper. So the businesses just start looking elsewhere. So you can implement a tax that's like over the next 12 months, we're not going to be on China stuff anymore, mm -hmm. but it'll be gradual and businesses can make the adjustments and adjust stuff. We're about to hit the end of hour two. So we'll have to uh, call it here and then uh, we'll hop back on just for a few more minutes.